Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing the Rocky Patel Short Run. As per usual, this review was conducted using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can use at home for your own reviews, or if you don't have the time to watch the entirety of this video, simply look in the description below where you'll see the full written review, which will provide you with the final PDF version of this cigar formula and give you a quick overview of the cigar. Furthermore, these cigars have been stored using the Boveda acrylic humidor that you can see beside me. We use 69% RH Boveda packs and they're monitored with a Boveda butler. This is for a period of three weeks to make sure that they're properly acclimated and prepared for the review. So the Rocky Patel Short Run is a 6x52 Toro, also known as the Epic. At least that's the one I have in my hand. It's available in other Vitolas as well. It's manufactured in Honduras. It is made using an accordion method. It features a San Andres Oscuro wrapper and the binder and filler are Honduran and we don't have any other information other than that, except there is a little story where Rocky Patel attended a black tie event and he saw other guests light up uh, exclusive and uh, luxury cigars such as the Ashton SEG and the Opus X and the Padron Family Reserve. And he hastily returned to his blending lab and assembled every variety of the rarest, oldest and most precious tobaccos he could find in order to blend his own exclusive and expensive cigar to date. It was, it then started production in Honduras, but then he discovered that it didn't uh, complement his favorite brand of caviar well enough, so he shut down the whole thing and then got rid of them all as bundles. Even though it was a super premium exclusive cigar, he wasn't satisfied with the results, and I believe that it can only be found among a couple of online retailers, including Holtz, who hastily managed to grab a whole stock of them, hence the name Short Run, in order to be able to retail them and in an exclusive manner. Anyway, that's the story behind it, but let's see how it fares in this review using the cigar formula. So first of all, uh, we have here a very dark, elegant looking cigar, to be fair. It does look wonderful, it shines under the light, uh, revealing a dripping, uh, luscious quantity of oils, and it features a chocolate fondant hue. It is rock hard uh, in terms of spring. It's not that hard. It is quite firm, a little bit too firm on the, on the spring, but it does have a nice straight construction. What's quite interesting is it's very heavy. I, one of the first things I noticed, given that I reviewed uh, the Avo XO only yesterday, this is quite weighty in comparison. There, there is uh, a lot of tobacco in here and it's heavy, thick tobacco as well. Its veins are quite refined. You may find a couple there, but they blend in very well with the dark wrapper. And in terms of aromas, it's a gourmand expression of some licorice, some caramelized tonka bean, and some spicy anise. I've already given this a quick guillotine cut so I can get on with the review. And in terms of Pre-light draw, you're looking at an excellent little airflow. It does give you some resistance, so you know what you are smoking. The flavor is quite rich. Again, the anise and the licorice have carried on through from the look and feel, but we also are gonna have some caramel instead of tonka bean. In this case, it's a lot much, it's a much more sweeter, it's more syrupy. So let's see what happens when we light this up. I'll see you in a second. So here we are in the first third, as you can see, there's a beautiful ash there. Slight waviness on the burn line, sadly. Uh, I did have to touch it up as well uh, when I was just about half a uh, centimeter into the smoke. Um, it, it does stay relatively wavy. There is some straightness though, and it does look pretty good. As for the flavor profile, very pleasant. A bit um, milder in flavor than I expected. It's quite subdued. We're looking at uh, more gourmand notes, some of which were detected in the pre-light. For example, the licorice seems to have followed all the way through, and that basically dominates the first third. It's sweet, but there is some bitterness. It leaves some caramelized flavors on the lips. 
There's some cacao as well, uh, quite buttery, uh, thick, and you do also have some argwood. Argwood being uh, also known as oud is a resin uh, used in perfumery. It has uh, notes, slightly vanillary notes. Uh, it's quite oriental and um, it's quite rich in some uh, muskiness as well. Um, it's not particularly complex just yet. Uh, it's very pleasant to smoke. Um, let's see what happens in the second third. I'm now in the second third, past the halfway point. As you can see, the burn line is a little bit skew with. This will probably need touching up. The ash plopped off uh, just as I was leaving the first third. It plopped off quite nicely. As you can see, here it is. It's nice and nice and hard. In terms of flavor profile, so it has become a lot more subdued since the first third. Uh, I feel like the body is starting to bubble away and increase in intensity. However, the changes have been quite slight. Uh, in terms of the actual notes detected though, there have been some uh, noticeable changes here. Uh, the licorice has pretty much subsided. The cacao has transitioned more towards coffee grounds. It's gained a certain bitter quality compared to earlier. It's lost the caramel sweetness that, uh, le that was left on the tip of the uh, tongue or on the lips. And the argwood, there's no longer this resinous oud flavor from earlier. Now we're looking at more um, molasses. Uh, however, it's, it's still quite bitter. It's not very sweet and the molasses component is very faint. However, there is also now present in the second third a cherry wood note. So we've, we've got this growing woodiness, which I believe I expect is going to be a lot more noticeable in the, in the final third. But in the second third is reminiscent of cherry wood. We're not quite oaky flavors yet but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that in the final third. And there's only one way to find out, and that is to keep smoking. So here we are, we're well into the final third. And, um, well, I hate to brag, but yes, there is a distinctive oak note in the final third that pretty much dominates it. You'll also get some hints of pepper and some musky labdanum. Otherwise, it remains quite subdued. The body has increased to a medium to full, but it is not a, a, a full, punchy cigar. It's still quite um, laid back, it feels, as if it's, as if it's restraining itself. It's, it's hard to explain, but it is somewhat lacking a, a certain je ne sais quoi, I suppose, in um, providing a distinctive character and flavor. It's not particularly complex as a smoking experience. Uh, as I said, it does remain subdued, and. There are some nuances which are relatively hidden, but they're, they're not going to be there making accords and interacting and creating these new and exciting notes. The mouthfeel, however, remains smooth throughout the whole experience. You're not gonna get any coarseness per se. Uh, it may feel a little bit rough around the edges, but it's quite pleasant to smoke. Then when it comes to the astringency and the palate stimulation, no excessive salivation, no dryness. It's quite balanced in that regard. There is some focus in the center of the palate and it doesn't really seem to touch the uh, lateral, rear or front uh, all that much, but it is balanced overall. The life cycle is, well, there have been changes through each third, but it's not as uh, developed and uh, adventurous as that. So you're not gonna get any surprises or any exciting moments of discovering new notes as you smoke it. And the finish is um, a moderate finish. It's not going to last very long on the palate. You will get, as this is a generally full-bodied cigar, you're not going to get uh, something that will really, uh, a flavor or a note that will linger on the palate for very long. It tends to leave more this sort of thick, full-bodied uh, cigar taste. And then the residual in the scent, uh, the residual scent in the room is not offensive, but it's not particularly pleasant. It doesn't leave any lingering fragrance. It leaves more uh, a stale uh, note as we tend to associate with cigars. It's quite strong and it is quite imposing, but it isn't offensive. Next, we're gonna talk about the burn. So the draw remained consistent throughout the whole experience and the temperature does remain cool. 
Uh, the angle was wavy pretty much throughout the experience. Although it wasn't bad, it did warrant two or three touch-ups. The backbone, though, is quite strong. As you can see, I have a nice bit of ash here that holds on quite nicely. Um, but it is uh, going to give you some waviness, which, you know, it happens. And uh, the overall experience of the cigar. So this comes with two bands. You have the main uh, Rocky Patel band here. And then there is a band that says Short Run, which I have left somewhere. Oh, I put it over here. There we go. And the Short Run band as well. Um, these are quite, uh, quite subtle. They're not particularly ostentatious. Um, it gives the impression of an exclusive cigar, especially with a name like Short Run. You know, it's a, a relatively limited release, but they're not particularly exciting bands that stand out to you. Uh, the, the brown color is kind of, it kind of blends in with the Oscuro um, wrapper. And then in terms of box, well, this is actually sold in bundles. It doesn't come in a box. It comes in a cellophane bundle with uh, a paper that wraps around the whole lot, just to, which just echoes the band and its color scheme, really. Then the value for money. Well, as I mentioned at the, the opening of this video, this cigar was, um, I think, so, is sold exclusively through, uh, through Holt. And it was uh, acquired by the Holt liquidation hotline. It uh, can be, it, its RRP is said to be $600 for a bundle of 20. And yet uh, a bundle of 20 can be picked up through um, online retailers for about $60, which comes to $3 per cigar. That seems like quite an extreme difference. Perhaps the uh, initial proposed uh, value of this cigar was meant to be $30, um, but for $3 a cigar, that represents excellent value all day. It's a very, very good purchase because it's a cigar that's going to uh, be picked up cheaply. It's something that you can use for different occasions, and that leads me on to the occasions. So it's not a, a formal cigar as perhaps Rocky Patel had initially um, envisioned. It is going to be more of a casual smoke. That it's a great one for a nightcap with a couple of buddies. Say you've got a couple of friends over when lockdown permits it and you're sharing a, a glass of scotch or something like that. This is a great cigar to have. It's also great for around barbecues. Late in the evening is more the time that I would associate this cigar. And finally, we're going to talk about some pairings. Uh, this is not scored. This is just something that we have at the bottom right hand corner of every cigar form, and especially when is printed when you have lots of ink in your printer. It's normally purple, it's red right now, so apologies for that. So in terms of food pairings, this is something that would go quite well with chocolate-based desserts. So for example, you could have it with dark chocolate. That will impart a certain creaminess onto the mouthfeel and help, um, help it smooth out some of those rough edges. You could also go for a dark chocolate mousse. That would really help provide some creaminess and some succulence to the overall experience. You could also go for a chocolate fondant. Uh, or even a sticky toffee pudding that uh, the, the, the toffee will add some, uh, and you could also have something with a treacle base that would add some uh, succulent caramel texture to the uh, cigar. As for beverages, continuing with the hot, uh, with the chocolate theme, hot chocolate, dark, hot dark chocolate would be a great choice as well, especially if you're not in the mood for something alcoholic and it's late in the evening, you know, imagine a cigar like this with a hot chocolate by a roaring fire, that would be a very pleasant combination. Otherwise, if you're more of a coffee drinker, an Americano would be my personal choice. I wouldn't go with anything with cream like a latte or a cappuccino. That may impart too uh, many flavors that contrast in the wrong way with the cigar. An Americano is gonna be longer than an espresso, of course, and so you'll be able to use it for longer, given that this is a cigar that, slow, that burns quite slowly. And finally, for the whiskey drinkers out there, I would consider an Isla single malt, something that is heavily peated, that has this bold smokiness. This normally is always a bit of a touchy one to have with a cigar, since the, that presence can very easily overpower the cigar and end up um, masking some of its flavors. But in this case, I think that they would pair quite nicely and marry well in terms of flavor. Something like a Lefroy 10, or even a Le Gouvelin, or an Ardberg, Hardberg would actually probably be one of the better choices.
Anyway, that's all from me today, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, a subscribe, and leave us a comment if you've tried the short run and you have any uh, experiences that you'd like to share or any questions about the cigar. Until next time, check out bespoken.com and see all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something that you will love.